Hey guys, it's Mewtwo King. And it's Salem. And I just wanted to talk about Steve's zero to death that uh, we just found out through experimenting. So I was looking at the frame data of Steve's moves. So first I'm going to let you know about one of his moves that can be really good. It's jab. So this move on every single sword except gold sword comes out on frame four and has 15 frames total time between the hits. You can do it by pressing A and doing it. You can jump and do it or you could like dash forward and do it like dash forward, at least stick and then, and then and then hold A to do it right away. So, and then I also want to mention that uh, Steve's forward air is a frame 8 overhead attack that actually spikes. I think it spikes around frame 10 or so, but you can actually lead this into that. Now, Sakurai, it was a little confusing because he said that you have to leave a gap between the sword and the, the fair. So because Sakurai said you had to leave a gap between the sword and the fair, I thought it wasn't going to let you do it right away, but turns out you can literally just do it right away. So you can literally just do jabs into the forward air and then place blocks against very specific characters to kill them. And now there's a few ways to do this. Uh, me and Sam have been labbing this for, 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 for a bit. So basically, if you do down throw with or without the anvil, you always start three irons. So it's usually going to be with the anvil. This, is, this down throw does 18 damage, see? Um, however, you can, all, you can actually combo it like this. So like, watch this. By just doing dash forward, release stick, and then hold A. At first, I thought, okay, down throw jab. But um, but it, it, there's no reason to do that. It, that's inconsistent. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But if you down forward, dash forward, release stick, and then jab. Let me do it faster. Then you can do this. And then I messed up there. But what you can do against specific characters is you can place a block under them to kill them. So I'm, I'm pressing the wrong button, sorry. If you place the block right here... It kills Palatina most of the time, and let, sometimes it doesn't for some reason, but it, usually it does, and on a wall stage it always will. And if you place it right here, uh, the one spot below, I don't know why it's hard to do there, but uh, here, it, you, it usually can, but she can ride the stage, so this won't be as effective if they can ride up the stage, but if it's like a wall stage, it'll be extra effective. But I just want to mention, this actually does not work against most characters. It works against very few, like we tested, like most up just eat through it. But we tried it on like Palatine and Inkling, and it was actually stopping their recovery. On certain times, it's actual zero death. And also, if you if I was to like get Diamond, then it's even more effective because the Diamond actually offers even more hit stun. So let me let me try to try to do it from Diamond real quick. Okay. Oops, oh, I forgot to I forgot to create it. <laughs> you forgot to make it's, it. Uh, that's it's uh, whatever. All right. I messed up, but you can you can see even if you even if you die it can work. But uh, I didn't I didn't do that properly. Let me try again. Yep. Uh, yeah, I was air dodging, but like sometimes it works with the jab, and some sometimes you can down throw and jab and it'll work. But uh, at most percents, you have to like dash forward and do it. But as you can see, they can all work with diamond. It's like extra easy. So let's say you're in. And now this can be practical in a match. Why? Because think of it. Let's say you're Steve and you're fighting them. You get the first stock, right? So now that you got the first stock, that means what? That means they're going to respawn at 0%, right? It works off a of grab at 0, so that's a common scenario. It works off regular jabs at 0, that's another common scenario. And I'll think about this. While they're dying and respawning, you, you're already doing this. You have multiple chances to get a diamond. Like, you're already halfway there to getting a diamond, or one-third of the way there to getting a diamond, just from the time they're respawning. So that scenario where you have a diamond sword there at zero and you either grab them or jab them, that scenario is not too uncommon. So even though it might be like, okay, this is some training mode combo, it's like I can actually see it for the reasons I said above being something that could actually be useful in, in, in actual play. This can be useful against Palatina, it can be useful Inkling, but it does not work against actual hitboxes and it also does not work against tethers. Like me and Salem tested this against Byleth and what happened is Byleth literally just didn't care that there was a block. It just grappled the ledge anyway. It, it didn't block it off at all. Yeah, <laughs> it tether, tether recovery just auto... <laughs> tether recovery is auto break the block, so tether recoveries aren't affected by this. Yeah, and we tried Mario, and sometimes Mario got underneath it, but like most of the time Mario didn't care. Most characters, these blocks actually don't work. Like we, I was thinking, okay, the blocks could be really broken for ledge trapping, and it is effective against Palatina, Inkling, and a certain other characters. Yeah. We haven't tested all the characters yet. I might make a separate video, or if you want to mention it in the comments below, which characters you've tested this on and it does uh, work and not work against. But uh, me, me and some have tested a few characters, and the basic idea is if they have a hitbox, the hitbox is probably going through it and killing it, 
it doesn't work against tethers, but it can work against characters that get headbonked, like Inklings up B, and it can work against Paolo's teleport. It doesn't work every time, and there are times that when Paolo's down here, she can full commit to go over here and then up B. However, Steve can read that, and instead of placing blocks to the left, for example, uh, let's say I do the forward air spike, right? And instead of, if I want to do that, she can hard read that I'm going to do that. And then at the same moment I make my decision, she makes her decision to go to the left. And then uh, she can recover high. Of course, I can still run up back on stage and hit her again, which is still nice. Um, but if I think she's going to go that way, I just like, and then, and then stuff like that. Or I, I can just do like, block those paths off. I've tested this with Salem quite a bit before making the video so, to make sure that these cer certain scenarios work. But uh yeah, basically you can create a 50-50 to death, or or in very specific scenarios it can cover all their options. But a lot of the time you're going to hit them and it can be a 50-50. Now there is actual counterplay to this, it's very specific, but you can actually uh, SDI. So uh, I'm going to show it without SDI first, so just try to do it, norm oh, try to do it normally. Okay. Now I didn't do that as quite as good as possible, I, I think, wait, let me try again. Yes. Yeah, so, so uh, some yes. Yeah, see, see, it says if there's no wall, if there's no wall, she can get through it sometimes. Let me try again. That combo. And, and then I'm you can dead. block. It. It's, <laughs> it's 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 kind of like specific because there's like counterplay can do on both sides, and it's also affected by staling, and it's also affected by if you're down throw, if you have iron. Because watch, if I don't have iron, uh, then watch the down throw. Like I can just do straight jabs, like which could be better or worse depending on their percent and what you're trying to set up for. Very specific percents. You might want to just go like into the. I don't know if. Wait, does that actually? Yeah, I think the best way to get is to just lead this together, and then you can just place a block. It, a block here uh, will be safe. If you place the block right here, sorry, um, right above leads like this, this works most of the time. Unless they ride the leads in very. Sometimes they can get up, but most of the time that blocks it. And uh, one one place lower ab above uh, can work too. So like. As I said, it doesn't always work, but it works from at least like half the time. And that could be a really cool gimmick because getting your grab at zero or getting this jab at zero can be just a really con scenario. And as I said, diamond, it's even easier. So when the sword is stronger, when you hit them with a diamond, like it's the same frames for me, but they're like frozen and stuck and stunned even longer as I showed with the other example. So that could be really effective there as well. So this is some really cool stuff you could do with Steve. Like these jabs are ridiculous and the fact that you can do the fair and blocks it's like you place the blocks in just a few frames, like four or six frames, and then you could just uh, walk and just trap people. Now, what I'm really interested in is like which massives this is going to be good against. Because I was theorycrafting that this might be good against Palutena, and I was I ended up being right. But I also was like, okay, some characters they might not bonk themselves; they might just go through it up B. And I tested it on Mario and other characters, as I said, and they, they just don't care. They just don't care at all. They, the up B just goes through it. Tevers don't care. Most characters actually don't care. So this is a very specific zero to death. However, I can see it practical in turn. Now, that, to show the counterplay real quick. Now, as I showed before, I showed it without the STI. Now, this time, do it with the act, with the STI. It's a little right, hard. No, <laughs> you messed up this time because you were doing it before. Yeah. The, that part, the spike didn't work. But there's been times Salem went like really, really high. Like, you can go pretty high. It's just STIing is weird <laughs> when it comes to this character. See. <laughs> Yeah, there were there were times Salem was going like really really high yeah, and it was like avoiding. You can kind of teleport. Actually, can, can I can I try S doing? I think I think I can do it. I... Oh, so I thought you were gonna down throw me. I wasn't uh. ready. Whoops. So like it doesn't actually combo to the spike there. Also, another thing to mention is when I'm using the wood, if I try to do two two wood wood uh, sword hits and then the forward air, Salem can actually buffer an air dodge in. However, with the diamond sword, because there's more hits done than the diamond, he cannot do that air dodge in. So that's another thing that can be important. So I, I, I can show that real quick if you if you want. You can actually escape this combo with the wood sword, and the wood sword is really common because always, Steve always starts with that. So. See, that actually, if, if my sword is a weak sword, like the wood sword, that part is at, you can actually counterplay that by just air buffering air dodge. Now, sure, Steve can read that and he can like charge, he can like know you're gonna do that and charge down smash or do some other type of punish. But just to mention, it's not a true hits, hit, hit stun combo with the weak swords, but with the diamond, it's free. Gold, it usually works. Steel, it's kind of iffy. It depends on like a lot of variables like staling and just a lot of other factors. 
Like, there's going to be a bunch of variables in play, but basically the diamond sword is extra easy. Wooden sword, they can buffer an air dodge in. So if you, if they, if you see them have a wooden sword and you think they're going to go for that combo, and you, you can, there's two ways to counterplay. You can SDI up by just wiggling the stick outwards, or you can buffer the air dodge in and then the forward air doesn't true combo. However, there are very specific scenarios where it can it can cover every option and be a true zero to death in a common scenario. Because so I got like let's say I let's say I let's say Palantina dies right, and I'm just farming, and what, and then you know I might well just 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 die. See like look, you're dying, and I'm farming, and then now like I either have diamond, well not yet, but I almost had diamond. Oh sorry, I forgot to make it. <laughs> yeah. I just realized my mistake. And then there's move staling. I don't know if that helps or hurts here. Yeah, I was mashing it. And then I, I I did the blocks wrong, but you, you you get you get the idea, guys. Like, you, you can see how that that part combos, and then you're in a position underneath me. And there's also been times what I've done is I was just mashing double jump and placing blocks, and I accidentally footstooled him. And if I accidentally footstool my opponent, like you can just mash X down here. If you accidentally footstool them, then they, they they just die anyway. So you just by mashing X and B and stuff, you might accidentally footstool them, and then they die. So yeah, this isn't completely guaranteed, but I can see it working a good amount of the time. And it forces very specific ways of counterplay, like the SDI or buffering the air dodge in, or recovering a certain way. And once you realize their specific habit of recovering a certain way, because most people, you know, people are people of habits, like, that once you realize that one habit, you could start uh, knowing that they're scared of that one thing, and then they're forced in the one specific counterplay option, and you just cover that. Like, if they're, if they're gonna SDI, you just, like, there's, there's not too much you can do, but it's not that free. But if you always know they're gonna go away, like, jump back and up be high, you can punish that. If you're know, always gonna know they're gonna go low, you can punish that. If you know they're always gonna buffer air dodge in, you can just charge a smash attack, like... And then th just that information from the threat of even having this existing in the first place, kind of like w uh, Ice Crown's having the threat of wobbling existing in the first place, it's pretty similar to that concept where you have to play a certain way to avoid the wobble, but if you if you don't respect it, then like they just get it for free. But if you do respect it, the ICs knows that human habits they're gonna do very specific things like jump at these timings, and then they can just play around that information. So even even in the situations that they can do to kind of play, um, it can still be really good. And as I said, with diamond, it's extra easy compared to before. So yeah, uh, we we've, I found this out pretty early, but again, it doesn't work against most characters and. From a grab, you pretty much have to be at very, very low percents. And I'm sure rage will affect it too. Keep in mind, I also have no rage. So if I had some rage, it would probably be even more difficult. But actually, it might make the wood part even easier since if I have rage, that means you're going to have a little more hit stun. So I can see the down throw dash forward double nair into the fair working uh, with rage because that'll make my wood sword basically like a steel iron sword in terms of power. If you think about it, because then you're in more hit stun. So I can see that being a common scenario. So I actually think this is practical. This isn't, this isn't really a clickbait. This is really just like something I actually think can be part of the meta. And so that's my, uh, that's some of my reasons why. So let me know what you guys think of this combo. Uh, I just, to be honest, I just thought this up randomly. I was just like, wait, I wonder if the sword combos to the jab. And then I wonder what characters get blocked. But if you look at my prior videos, I've kept theory crafting. Like, I bet you can block certain recoveries with it. And then I was also, st and if you look at my other prior videos on the MGV channel, you can see I was like labbing frame data and stuff and trying to see which characters you like, hmm, I wonder how this scenario is going to interact with this up B. I wonder if the, which moves are actually going to combo to each other. So the fact that this ja jab combos into the spike that goes down, uh, that's like, ex that's just like extremely good. So yeah, uh, it's a Steve zero to death. It's not a broken zero to death like Luigi, where you just grab them at any percent and they just die with a certain sequence of combos, but it's a very specific zero to death that you can start in a, a number of ways, such as grab with the anvil, grab without the anvil, or just getting the jabs in general. Or you can actually just get, I mean, get it off a of forward air. There's a lot of ways. And I think that'll actually help in like the Palatine and Inkling matchups, and it might work in more. So let me know what you guys think of this uh, this zero to death. Do you think it's legit? Do you th which characters do you think it's gonna work against? If you know any more ways to make it more consistent or, or counter plays on both sides, uh, let me know in the comments below, because I think this could be really interesting to explore and could help Steve's place in the meta, even if it's just for specific counterpicks. So yeah, guys, um, thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Uh, hit the bell for notifications, because I will be having a lot more Steve videos. I'm planning on just labbing this character nonstop with Salem all, all very often. So if you want to stay up to date on anything me and Salem learn, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell, because that, then you'll get notified of all the content. And I'm going to keep labbing and experimenting all the different ideas I talked about in my prior videos. That's it. That said, uh, see you guys later, and well, have a have a nice night or morning, depending on whenever this video is released. <laughs>
as well. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel in the description below. See you guys later. Oh, just to mention, in the description below, uh, you're all, we're also going to be having other ways to support if you want to join, become a member, if you want to uh, you know, buy merch or whatnot. And sign up for my ultimate tournament. I have an ultimate Melee uh, Smash Remix tournament with rivals as well as Kirby Fighters, which is going to be November 6th through 8th. This is our monthly tournament series. It's smash.gg slash FPS online. Uh, and all this, again, all affiliate links, all the ways to support and whatnot will be in the YouTube description below. But I plan I'm planning on releasing a lot more content on Steve, on the balance patches, and all this other stuff as soon as possible. As soon as we learn it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be labbing it with Salem or labbing it alone, and then I'm going to get the information to you in uh, a timely manner, but I'm going to try to get it as accurate as possible as well because I want to lab the different scenarios and counterplay the different things. All right. Well, with that, with that said, I'll see you guys later.